Earlier, I spoke to political analyst Peter Matthews about his first-hand account of the day the world changed. Peter, can you remember where you were on 9-11? What do you remember of that fateful day? Yes, oh, very clearly. I was driving to go to my college to teach from my house in Long Beach to my uh, college class, and I turned around when I heard what happened on the radio, not even halfway to class. I turned around and went right back home to check on my... Uh, my wife and my, you know, my family basically, and see they were okay. And I, and then I, I think we we called classes off that day, uh, so it, it was pretty pretty amazing, and shocking. As a scholar of history, can you quantify the significance of that day? How do you even begin to describe the impact of 9/11? 9/11 is a seminal event. It's one of those events that will never be forgotten. It's had major impact on the modern day United States national security state, but also in the domestic policy here. For example, the USA Patriot Act, which was passed by Congress just 45 days after the attack, it went a bit overboard for a lot of people. It allowed warrantless wiretapping and surveillance. It sought out certain people that were put under suspicion, especially, for example, Muslim Americans. And it really curtailed individual freedom of expression. It put a chilling effect and whereas the United States flourishes on, on democracy, having a complete open discussion, it really did a lot of those things, among other things as well. George W. Bush is expected to speak at a service in Pennsylvania. How well do you think he handled 9-11? I think that uh, it seems that the, the country wasn't prepared for it, although there were some warnings regarding it, but something like that cannot be predicted entirely. And yet we know there's evidence of certain chatter that was going on and warnings that a big attack could occur, even using airplanes. And so it seemed a little bit for, to some people that maybe President Bush wasn't quite on top of it. But on the other hand, he reacted immediately. And then he, um, you know, was able to recover from that initial shock to some extent. Uh, and the main thing was to go and find the perpetrator. And so he went to Afghanistan to get bin Laden. And, and the uh, Congress passed the uh, authorization of the use of force. Open-ended authorization is still in place today to allow the U.S. Uh, president to go anywhere in the world and fight terrorism. And uh, that happened uh, to back the, uh, the United States Afghanistan uh, invasion or, or overthrow of the government of the Taliban, because Taliban wouldn't turn over bin Laden. That was the whole crux of the matter. And George Bush, unfortunately, on, in the efforts, allowed it was allowed that um, bin Laden escaped in the Tora Bora Mountains and went into Pakistan and hid out for many years. That was a, a failure as President Bush turned his attention to Iraq. That was a big failure going in that direction. Joe Biden recently ordered the declassification of some of the unreleased documents from the investigation. There are still so many unanswered questions, aren't there? And, and many families aren't fully satisfied. Absolutely. They would like to know if there were any involvement with, the, with Saudi Arabia in any way at all. And they would like to know why many Saudi nationals were allowed to leave the country just the very next day without being interviewed by, by the FBI. And they really want to know and to get to the bottom of this whole thing. And the 9-11 victims' families are the tragic uh, people who were horribly uh, affected by this. And, and they, need, they have every right to know what happened on that day because it affected them personally. And the country wants to know as well. We want to know the details of that because we have to learn from it. And otherwise, we'll never go forward and there could be another attack again as well. We're not careful about this. The anniversary, as well as recent events in Afghanistan, give us cause to consider the so-called war on terror. How successful has the war been? It's been uh, not very successful. I mean, you could say in a sense it was that there was no other major attack on U.S. soil since the 9-11 attacks. But on the other hand, there were many, many other attacks, diffuse attacks all over the world against U.S. targets at embassies and places like that. And so we haven't really won the war on terror. That's the whole thing. And it's an open-ended war without any, any real focus, as, as it should have been. And it should have involved our allies a lot more than what it did. President Bush took more of a unilateral approach, which was, I believe, a mistake. We could have involved a lot more of our fellow allied countries to give us information about the terrorists, about their bank accounts, intelligence gathering, and, and coordinated efforts together, even the, the military and diplomatic efforts on the part of allies, not just having the U.S. go it alone, especially when he went into Iraq. George Bush made a big mistake by going it alone, mostly in Iraq, and that was, it had a big net negative effect overall in U.S. foreign policy, in my view. Peter Matthews, thanks for joining me. Thank you.